292-35 COR. And so I now have the sponsor, uh, Senator Clint Rigel, uh read the titles and introduce the bill, please. The bills. We'll hear on about both bills at the same time right now. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one moment, please. I don't have the title in front of me. I apologize. I just had a opening statement without the title. Uh, if you can give me one moment, I can pull it up. Here, Senator Rigel, I can read the title. So okay. bill number 291-35, two, two uh, introduced by Senators Clint Rigel and Sabina Flores Paris. An act to transfer administrative jurisdiction of lot number 507 conservation reserve consisting of 5,509,664 square meters in the municipalities of Inarahan, Talafofo, Marizo, and Yamatek from the government of Guam to the Department of Agriculture for the purpose of developing the Guam Forest System Plan. Bill number 292-35 introduced by Senators Clint Rigel, Clinton E. Rigel and Sabina Flores Perez, an act to transfer administrative jurisdiction of lot number 526 new consisting of 1,555,754 square meters in the municipality of Maritzo from the government of Guam to the Department of Agriculture for the purpose of developing the Guam Forest System Plan. Please proceed, Senator. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So the Guam, uh, so my testimony will be, uh, I mean, my testimony, excuse me, my opening statement will be on behalf of both bills. The Guam Forest System Plan was created to respond to the increasing need to preserve Guam's natural resources. Conservation and preservation are a critical part of ensuring the survival of our island and of the people of Guam and future generations. Many things impact our forests, natural disasters like typhoons, droughts, invasive species, and our growing population. One of the greatest threats to these forests are wildfires that affect forest and watershed health. Wildfires threaten and hamper the expansion of native forests. This in turn accelerates erosion, creates more sediment pollution to both surface and domestic water supplies as forests have a critical role in water quality. We must do what's necessary to protect and nurture our endemic trees, mitigate the threats to our forests and Guam's biodiversity, water supplies and reef systems. The Guam Forest System Plan is necessary to combat deforestation and the devastating toll it takes on our island resources. The plan mandates that the government of Guam designate property for the purposes of conserving our endemic forests. Uh, both of these bills, 291 and 292, are part of the Department of Agriculture's mission to develop and protect these resources using practices that allow for the conservation and protection of our natural resources, habitats, and ecosystems. It designates GovGuam owned property to the Department of Agriculture by giving them administrative jurisdiction over these lots for the purpose of carrying out the Guam Forest System Plan. Now, both of these bills do basically the same thing. They designate lots. The only difference between the two bills are the parcels of land that are designated. I want to thank uh, Senator Sabina Perez for uh, working closely with me on this legislation. Um, in fact, she began working on the legislation and then we started to work together on it. And she also has a similar um, bill as well. And I'd like to thank the Department of Agriculture for uh, and the Forestry uh, Division for working closely with this uh, legislation as well. Um, uh, with that, Madam Chair, that is my opening statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, my colleagues, uh, Senator Sabina Paris, the Vice Chair of the Committee, Senator Min and Minority Leader, Senator Tello Taitigui, of course, Senator Clint Rigel, the author of the two bills that we are hearing right now, and Senator Mary Camacho Torres. Thank you, colleagues, for being here. And so we also have with us today the director of the Guam Department of Agriculture and uh, Ms. Justin Munebret. And we also have Christine Camacho Ferrin, Forestry Division Chief, Forestry and Soil Resources Division at the Guam Department of Agriculture. So uh, director, I will um, give you the floor on the bills and allow you to testify or, or either of you. Thank you. Let me pull up my testimony. I submitted um, our testimony to the committee beforehand. Um, so hopefully if you, or it's available to all of you our distinguished senators and thank you for hearing this bill, Senator Terlahi. We really appreciate it um, as it comes at a very, um, at a great moment in time with some of the work that we're doing. Um, half a day, Senator Terlahi and committee, thank you for the opportunity to provide written testimony for bill number 291-35 and bill 292-35. 
Um, both bills complement the intent, the intent of the Guam Forest Legacy Act of 2012, which mandated that a Guam Forest System Plan be developed to protect, preserve, and manage conservation forests throughout Guam. These lands will advance efforts to protect and conserve natural habitat and ecosystems, open spaces, historic artifacts, land, outdoor recreation, and education island-wide. They will be managed from a landscape scale for the permanent protection of watersheds, natural, scenic, historical, um, historic resources, and the necessary ecological balance of the forest system to prevent its deterioration and destruction. Additionally, Bills 291 and 292 support Guam's Forest Action Plan, which prioritizes forest management amidst changing landscapes impacted by increased urbanized zones, roadways, impervious surfaces, wildfires, invasive species, all of which introduce significant disturbances to Guam's forests. The Forest Action Plan aligns with national, state, and private forestry themes and objectives to protect, conserve, and enhance wildlife and fish habitat, connect people to trees and forests, and engage them in environmental stewardship, stewardship activities, restore fire-adapted lands, and reduce risk of wildfire impacts, and to manage and restore trees and forests to mitigate and adapt to global climate change. The bills introduced by Senators Rigel and Perez will advance efforts to conserve Guam's forest resources and the species that depend upon them in Southern Guam. Funding has already been identified and is available through the Department of Defense's Readiness and Environmental Protection Integration Program. Proposed activities may include, but are not limited to propagation, outplanting and establishment of native plant species, installation of erosion control treatments, monitoring and adaptive management practices. The Department of Agriculture understands the intent of Bills 90, 291 and 292 and fully supports these items. The proposed bills are consistent with the division's mission to conserve, protect, and enhance Guam's vegetative environment and sustain the natural resources which are dependent on healthy forests. Should you have any questions regarding this testimony, please do not hesitate to contact me or our Forestry Chief, Christian, uh, Christine camacho Ferrin. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Farron, did you want to testify separately or shall we proceed with questions? All right then. Thank you, Director. Um, um, I guess Senator Rajel, have you had any questions first? Um, all right. No, no questions. Okay. Could could you please describe the property? You know, I'm in retrospect, I, I regret not putting a map up or something uh, because these seem to be huge tracts of land in, in the south. And uh, if you could just describe for those who are listening who might be from Maritzo and Pneumatic and Inarahan and want to know exactly what we're talking about here. So the, the tracks, can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. So the tracks yes. are predominantly grassland species, uh, both in, invasive and uh, we would refer to them as like nuisance natives now. For the lack of forest cover, we now have grasses that have uh, that are just predominating that landscape, which moves fire very quickly across this landscape. And so, existing forest strands are constantly under threat by the edge effect. Right, the edges of these forests are being burned on an annual basis. There are um, badland patches. So again, badlands are the denuded of soil and vegetation patches that we see along our southern ridge. And we currently have reforestation projects taking place within these tracks. So within the Manel watershed specifically. And one of the sites is a hundred acre reforestation project. And a second site in the same watershed is a much smaller track it was five acres to begin with. It's now hit 17 because you know, our trees are doing really well. Uh, but the, the goals here are to restore native vegetation. And what we see are remnant stands of uh, some remnant patches of, of trees, native trees that have been holding on along these badland edges. So the badlands have acted as, unfortunately, but fortunately, um, fire breaks, which, which are protecting those remnant stands that are left there. So our efforts will be to, to identify which species these are and continue to collect seeds from them because they're hardy. They're, they've withstood the test of time on these sites and to expand upon that. And additionally, around the, uh, the private properties closer to our private borders, um, incorporate some agroforestry in there as well so the community can, the community can benefit um, from our fruit and trees. 
Can you have a map of which uh, tracts of land we're talking about here, or are you able to describe them based on landmarks? You, you mentioned ridges. Yes, I think I, I think about the residents and, and uh, describe to them which property we're talking about. So let me see if I've got a, a copy of the map up. I, I do, I just have to, let's see. So the one track where we talk about the Minnell watershed, that's going to be, if you're driving down south, um, you can actually spot our forest now because you're going to see grass, 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 and boom, trees. Um, but one of the, the landmarks for these parcels is the big greenhouse, the two-story greenhouse, when you're coming from Minarahan to Malesa. Mm -hmm. That's a good mark that just sort of identifies. the. Actually, a better one is the environmental station, the UOG environmental station. Mm -hmm. It Just use that as a landmark and imagine you're going towards Marito, and then it just sort of covers um, that whole front side that you can see from the road back. And um, at least our, our reforestation, the landscape scale project ongoing right now, that's about 100 acres. So you can see that from the road, but there's a the bigger chunk of the parcel is, is back away. So you, people can't see that. So it's great that we were able to start close enough that the community can see the successes um, of the project from their drive. And then our Kaneni Road site um, is, an, is another end of this, which which, oh, um, sorry, before sorry. you get there, can you describe how, so how far does that go from the greenhouse or the uh, UOG <laughs> station? Uh, how far into Marie's? It's going, I mean, you can't even see it from the road anymore. It goes beyond the houses all along the back. This is a huge track. Um, how many uh, but, okay, but I mean, along the road, how, how um, because it says Marizo Talafofo in Araha. Yeah. It's it's the shared uh, when you look at the when you look at the bigger map, right? It's mm -hmm. the shared boundary lines in the back that people don't see because it's it's so far off the grid. So me giving you an example from the roadway, I, it wouldn't be accurate enough. Um, maybe let me say I don't have a street map of this uh, in front of me, but basically if you drive from experimental station side which which kind of hits the boundary and you just travel all the way towards Jumatic. This is we're talking the Jeep trail property. So if you're from the villages of Inner Ahan Marizo Yamatic, you know which trails we're talking about. These are the Jeep trails that, that are constantly referenced as you know between the Iba trees in Malesu. That is literally the, the trail beginning. Like that's where it starts. And those Jeep trails go up and into the up and into the it's not really a ridge but up in inland and then they come out at different parts from Gaius from the Manel River Gaius and then um you can see uh what is it Pequa area from one of our farther reaches so imagine like it's everything beyond um but from the road uh, I guess Pigua area towards Marizo side. Sorry, <laughs> giving map directions in my head, um, and all the way to to Experimental Station. That should cover and, it. All right, and and we're talking about the the all the ridges in there, um, the ridges right. and the valleys. Pretty much, it's the stuff. It's what you can't see, but you'll see the Jeep trails if you drive in side streets. If I could add, this is kind of like, and correct me if I'm sorry, if I could add, uh, Madam Chair, and yes. correct me if I'm wrong, Christine, this is very much like the interior of the villages. This is the inland. It's very in the interior of the island. So that's why she's saying it's hard to describe unless you're really hunting in the jungles there or hiking a lot there, then you can kind of describe it, but it's, uh, or on the Jeep trails in that area. So it's really uh, in the inland. There's a lot of that's why it's not just one ridge line, like she was saying, there's mountains and hills that just go all the way in, interspersed with some flatlands and some hills. And so it's just, the topography is pretty um, hilly. <laughs> lots of little hills, lots of little valleys, lots of little gullies. And that's kind of that whole interior area of the south there, of that part of Mariso. And so, Senator Paris, could you just take over for a minute and please lead this discussion? Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Sure, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, you can oh. continue. Senator Rigel, or did you want to, did you conclude your yeah, comment? Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, so that's kind of the description of where I would say this, uh, that lot is and the 
that one lot is. Now there's another um, one uh, that's the, Christine, correct me again if I'm wrong, the Bolognas area, right? Or Bolognas or Bolognas. It's that sort of the interior of the Mount Lam Lam, what we know is like, like the Mount Lam Lam area and that sort of ridge line, is that correct? Like and that would the be- back. Yeah, that like would be in the back. interior. So if you're looking at the Mount Lam Lam and that whole mountain ridge, this is on the inside of that, right? On the interior, like inland area, right? That's the Bolognese area. And it's all sort of grasslands. And again, a lot of little hills and valleys throughout. Sorry. Yes, yes uh, thank you, Senator Rogel. Uh, Chelsea, did you want to add? Sorry, my phone or my, I keep somehow magically muting and unmuting myself, but unless it's secret MIS. Um, I wanted to uh, point out that for like lot 507, I'm looking at the map right now, um, the interior aspect or Northern, I guess, sec segment of the lot, unless my orientation is wrong. Well, one whole portion of the lot borders military, um, the US Naval Reservation area for Fina Lake. Um, and then, so I can literally like turn around and look in my backyard right now and see it. So it basically cuts all along the inside bordering um, Fina Lake and the Naval, uh, mag, not naval, is a naval mag, naval magazine area, and then along the outer um, side over here by the Babula area, which is further south. So it is; it's all just interior grassland um, and jungle area. With um, I think there's maybe farms on the outskirts of it, and there's no residential areas within there. Um, and it's actually illuminating for me to conceive that. Um, to visualize the lots because I went on a, a hiking tour with our conservation our officers just maybe in August, um, Deputy Cruz and I went and we walked the entire region and my heart was just aching the entire time. I took hundreds of pictures because so much of that area is burned and is just what we call badlands now, which is, it's an offensive term in that it's even necessary, but that's what the areas have resorted to. And, um, the conservation officers pointed out that if you were standing there just five, even 10 years ago, it was completely covered with trees. Um, the areas have been completely deforested because of arson. Um, there's trash littered in there from poachers. It's, it's, it is offensive to see what it's become, but it's primarily grass and badlands now and in desperate need of conservation and reforestation. But I just wanted to give you an idea like of where um, at least lot five or 507 is with respect to some other landmarks. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Um, all right, so can I ask if the property that you're describing is uh, already being used by Department of Agriculture for reforestation, why do we need to transfer the jurisdiction of it to Department of Ag? It's, a, it's own, all of this is owned by the government of Guam, right? So we're just transferring it from general government of Guam to specifically Department of Agriculture. Yeah, why is that technically necessary? Or why is that transfer necessary? Thank you for the question, uh, Madam Chair. Part of well, at least in this area, there is no reforestation work in Lot 5, 507 that's occurring within uh, or by the Department of Agriculture. And with respect to some of the other areas, that's only a small segment that the government or the Department of Agriculture is working on. And if the property is not within our inventory, we have no, um, no ability to protect or conserve that area in the future if anyone in the government decided to use it for other purposes. It's really not protected or specifically um, targeted or addressed as a conservation area that we can reforest. Um, and it also allows us to apply for more funding with respect to those specific properties because we would be able to guarantee the conservation of the area for more than a decade or two. All right, maybe if you could describe that, because I, I can see the government working together. If anyone wanted to use it, then uh, they would, of course, you would know about it and be able Not to. Not necessarily, ma'am. Um, a prime example is the wind turbines up on Cross Island Road. GWA put up the wind turbines. Um, they believe part of that property was under the jurisdiction of Department of Parks and Recreation. However, it wasn't a conservation area, but we had no say in the matter because it's not within our or under our administration. 
And so that one was in the the jurisdiction had been transferred to Department of Parks and Rec or had been reserved for them? It was already within their jurisdiction, I believe. Um, Christine, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was within their, their, under their administration already because it borders the Tarzan Falls area. um, And it's in a sort of government designated conservation area, but it was then transferred to GPA for the purposes of a wind turbine, which now sits in that, in the middle of that conservation area. All right. Okay. So if you could describe how, how, um, yeah, transfer of the property allows you to get funding. Sure. Um, Christine, do you want to take that or do you want me to? I can, I can, we can jump on it together. So the, the commitment from the, so the USDA Forest Service, right, they, there's an expectation for commitment for when funds are invested. Basically, we are awarded these grant funds for long-term projects. Our projects are landscape scale restoration. And so this is not a two year, three year expectation of of keeping it as such. It is a 20 year plus because the function of the forest is is what's needed. The ecological function for it to to do the job that we need it to do, uh, retain soils, maintain healthy habitat. And in by turn, we are now reducing flood potential or we're restoring um, livable conditions for wildlife, right? Um, you'll find that a lot of our hunters, you know, and we're, we're talking about hunters, not, not arsonists um, or poaching activities. It's by restoring habitat, we now are able to give our hunters a safer, a safer place to be able to hunt for, um, for game because now they're not hiking miles and miles and miles out of the way where they're crossing dangerous terrain just to be able to find game within suitable habitat. So there there are multi-pronged benefits to this. And I think what gets skipped because we're so busy talking about the the poaching and the burning that happens that we forget that these these true to their honor um, uh, recreational users that they need to benefit from this as well. So it's bringing game closer in the sense that they're not traveling for hours. Um, And it's just ensuring that our commitment, the government of Guam and resource managers that we're not putting thousands and millions of dollars into a project site to have it mowed down within five years. So a good example is uh, Mosso Reservoir. Great projects are gonna be coming out of there, but Mosso Reservoir Nature Park on our side. This is where you asked if that the agencies are always communicating this. Sometimes there's a break in communication. And a good example was I sat through a meeting and found out that we had proposed, forestry proposed for three years, an offer to, uh, to remove African tulip from the edges of Maso Reservoir because it's an invasive and there are more preferred natives. We weren't able to execute the removal of the African tulip for various <laughs> procurement and, and not having contractors locally who, who were bidding on the project. And so it never happened and we had to reprogram funds. But here's my point. I sat through a meeting that said, oh yeah, we're gonna be breaking ground in like five to 10 years. Here's the plan for, for an expansion of the cemetery, veteran cemetery. Do you see the break in communication there? We would have invested thousands, you know, add some zeros on a reforestation project, restoration and re- re- reforestation to have it bulldozed for expansion. And, and this is a great honorable project that's gonna be taking place at Maso, but the lack of communication there could have cost us quite a bit. And what is the property, like for example, that example, what, what, whose jurisdiction was the property under? What do the papers say? That would have been uh, Department of Agriculture has been managing the property for since it was turned over to the government. Um, so would you say you had jurisdiction similar to the jurisdiction that you want in this bill? Not or, specifically, but the, it's generally yeah. under the government of Guam. Okay, so it's generally under the government of Guam. All right. So yeah. it could have gone either way. It could have gone to the expansion of the cemetery or started off as a forestry project that we invested 
a lot of money in and then been turned over to Veterans uh, Affairs for the expansion of the cemetery. Um, and it's not just U.S. Forest Services that provides grant, uh, grant funding based on um, the ability of the agency to administer the projects. Um, there is also U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and the Wetlands Grants, which we're applying for to um, protect the southern watersheds, but we couldn't target any specific government of Guam property for that project at the time because we don't have any under our administration and some of the other lots are mixed up or not mixed up, but there's, the information isn't up to date about exactly which government agency has ownership of that. And if it was specific to Chamorro Lantras, then it also requires going through the board. So then it doesn't always make for the timely um, ability to submit proposals based on that if there's no clear ownership of the property and U.S. Fish and Wildlife isn't even gonna entertain it if we don't have less than 20 years commitment for that specific property. Um, and then additionally with funding like the $2 million that's being proposed for the next uh, five years for REPI um, under the DOD REPI funds, um, that is specifically um, what's pinging on the ability of the Department of or Agriculture to administer the lands that are gonna be conserved. And did they di dictate the land that- they No, they the don't. Project, you're the one selecting? And do they need all- We select it with the um, non-governmental organization. Well, we discuss it with them, but we're the ones who offer up which properties we'd like to see um, in, supported with the, for with the funding. Okay. so. Could I, yeah, if I didn't get it yet, uh, you might have submitted it today. Uh, copies of your proposal then? Oh, yes, yeah. we did. All right, good. Yeah, because I wanted to further understand exactly what you're going to do. The, 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 what you describe is uh, a lot of different things and uh, a part of this property, at least part of it, it's my understanding that um, part of it was reserved for the Department of Parks and Recreation and that they were supposed to develop parks and also conservation areas. But uh, are you not able to Which work- Which property, better? Senator? I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check. I don't have it in front of me, but- um, Do you mean I, with the REPI agreement? No, no. I mean the pro part of the property that you want us to change jurisdiction. Oh, okay. Yeah, to transfer jurisdiction to you, yeah, may have been reserved for other purposes. Some of them. Yeah, they're, these are huge tracks. So yeah, I want to be able to explain to the people of these villages. Yeah, we, we're if we transfer this, we're going to remove any other use just like you want to do with those other properties. Yeah, so we would be precluding any other use of these properties, right? Well, under the Guam uh, Forest Legacy Act, or even in the forest mm -hmm. system plans, um, the only uses that would be precluded would be development, um, and then other uses that are destructive to the property, such as um, recreational activities that are harmful, like off-roading. Um, but it would be open for recreational activities, conservation, education, um, research. So I think most of any of the uses that would be allowed or allowable would be to the benefit of the communities that are surrounding. Um, and the only ones that are restricted as based on the Forest Legacy Act of 2012 would be um, development that violates any of those other uses. So right. we would and essentially be enhancing recreational yes. use. And um, if I may add um, something, so we are also working um, on building our, our NGO uh, collaboration. So Island Girl Power is a great example and restoring and recovering the abandoned parks within the villages. And there are a number of these and their, their track sizes vary. And this is these are properties under the Department of um, Parks and Recreation. And so forestry's effort would be to rediscover those parks and put them back into the great use that they should be for the community. And some of these are the developments when the, when the developments were first um, built, what is this in the sixties? And they, they all came with like built-in green spaces. And these are, the, these are the parcels that have been lost over time and become illegal dump sites, um, you know, illegal activity taking place in them. So one of our initiatives is to re re reclaim those with the community's help. And you know that, so even though it sounds like we're getting, we're asking for this um, 
uh, administrative uh, management over these large tracks, we're also still trying to help recover these, these parks that are accessible to the community already and just not being utilized. Um, and that those are still within DPR's um, administration. So if that, that helps. All right, yeah, thanks. Well, we expect all these agencies to work together, right? And for many purposes, what do you have um, something, I guess, in writing that where um, USDA or for your um, DOD project called REPI that uh, where they require that, 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 you know, a lobby pass to transfer jurisdiction to you? Do you have anything in writing that we, we could have? Yes, um, in the MOA that I sent you and the committee, um, there's an agreement in there where the stipulation is one of the points that it's property that must be under the administration of the Department of Agriculture. Um, other verbiage would be in some of the grant proposals that we've submitted. So it's not specific to Guam or the Department of Agriculture, but it says within the grant uh, notice of funding opportunity that the property must be administered by the agency that's applying. Um, and a perfect example is we submitted a $1 million proposal for the um, Seagull Highlands, Pago Bay watershed, um, but there was not government of Guam property that was at least under the Department of Agriculture. So our fastest route was actually to work with a private landowner um, who owns several hundred acres that they think somewhere upwards of 500 acres. And he agreed to allow us to have administration for 20 years or more over, I think it was 36 acres of that property, just so we could apply for this proposal to protect the Pago Bay watershed and the Pago Bay rivers. So it comes specific in the funding opportunities, um, but for the purpose of the REPI funding, it was clear in the MOA and we sent that to you. Yeah, so we received that this morning. I'll review yes. that. We were not able to review it prior to the hearing. Yeah, okay. Uh, so thank you for sending that today. What about, um, do you have any legal opinions on this topic, about the transfer administrative jurisdiction or any of those terms? Okay, I'm, I'm not, sorry, I'm fine. not sure I understand. Are, um, I'm just checking if you've, uh, if this question has been raised to the attorney general regarding, yeah, transfer. Well, the attorney general is helping us with the transfer of the private property um, to write out, I forget what it's called, Christine, but it's in the US forestry guidelines. Um, what is it called? Um, conservation easement? Yes. 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 Yeah. So the there is um, federal regulations on that. And then the attorney general's office is assisting us with that for the private um, property conservation easement. So I would assume, or I guess that that means that they would be in support of helping us to do that if necessary. Okay, so the bill says that the transfer of the properties in, in furtherance of the Guam Forestry Legacy Act, uh, which you know was passed years ago. And my understanding, there is no property in that inventory right now? None? Or is there some? None. 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 So this would be the first property transferred there. And um, it, the, the act also says that there will be plans and rules pursuant to the act that uh, would, you know, show the actual activities that you are going to, or that are going to take place on these properties. But yes. my understanding, so the rules are not yet promulgated, right? Well, we drafted rules together with um, BSP and the Coastal Zone Management Program. Um, and they're with the Attorney General's office right now for, I guess, for additional input or edits that they needed to make on it. But we're, we're in process of that. We've actually, I would say we're probably about maybe 70% of the way, maybe 80% of the way with the rules. Okay. Um... Okay, so we got the, the, the memorandum of agreement now. We will review that. And I had also asked you if, um, do you have proposed funding from any other source for uh, any of these properties at this time? No, not at this time. It's primarily the $2 million with the REPI funds. 
Okay, and the two million will be used for all of this property that we're talking about in these two bills, or just a small portion on the border of uh, Naval Mag? No, um, well, we haven't specifically decided on which lots or which areas. Um, and I don't think $2 million would be able to cover the entire areas, but um, we are working with JRM on that and they're already drafting proposals for the next funding cycle. So this funding is for five years, but it was just for this um, fiscal year. So we can always apply in each subsequent year for additional funding. And this is the first funding of its kind that was ever used for this type of purpose of conservation um, areas off of, out of DOD, um, outside of the fence basically, and used specifically for the restoration of conservation areas. Um, and it's only the second one that's ever been given for conservation specifically. Um, but they're really excited about this project. And so we're, like I said, we're already starting the proposals for the next coming cycle. Yeah, it's, it, it was my understanding reading the EIS and, and, and maybe the record of decision or, you know, when the concerns came up about, you know, um, clearing the limestone forests up north, uh, the massive acreage, uh, thousands of acres that they just were having to clear up there that uh, they, you know, they were going to look for mitigation projects. And I guess this is one of the mechanisms of how they do that. They go through the... No, this is not a mitigation project and the funding is separate from that. This is actually the Department of Navy Secretary's discretionary funds um, for just restoration and conservation projects that they use around the country. So it's, um, it's separate from any of them. And it even says it in the MOA that this is not... Um, mitigation for basically the military buildup, but the, that they describe the ongoing uh, DOD mitigation projects that they have inside the fence. So when was that MOA entered into? Uh, 2019. We're going to talk about a long, yeah, having worked on it for many years, right? Uh, 2019, were you the, the director at the time? You're yes. The one so yes. When you signed that, was it, uh, was, did the governor also sign? Um, no, it was not necessary for the governor to sign, I think, because it's an MOA and not an MOU. And there's no um, financial, uh, it doesn't, what do you call it, obligate the government of Guam to any financial, or doesn't have any financial obligations attached to it. But, but restricted property, for sure. No, it, um, not restricted property. Well, it says that the department must be was, must administer the property. Right. Okay, and then um, all right. Just trying to get a very clear understanding of you know what's going to be done on this property because it, because it's uh, these are huge uh, areas. If I if I can say when I heard restrictive, I just mean I want to make sure that you know it's understood that this is not any work that we do in the re the reforestation or restoration work that's that's going to be completed. This will not um, uh, exclude any users, potential users, from recreating on these lots. Not by any means. There's no. There's not going to be an issue of of access um, for these properties. Right, but but when we transfer it, we can't confirm that. That's up to Department of Ag after that, right? And so normally that's by permit. And uh, I think that's what that even that that act, that the Forest Act says that uh, you are going to determine all the rules as to what recreation takes place there, who has access and, and everything so that. But the right? rules that's also, the, the, the Forest Legacy Act also says that we're not allowed at all to ever restrict community use of the property. So the rules would just be to guide the use. Um, and of course, we would only do that in protection and conservation of the area. Um, but yeah, the, the legacy access that we can't restrict the access to the community at all. Okay, maybe you're talking about the Federal Legacy Act because our no, local, the, you're our local determine the rules our, and regulations, right? And the, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but the Forest Legacy Act is the local one. The 2012 one says that um, the government of Guam is not allowed to restrict the use to the community for that area, for any property underneath the Guam Forest System. Okay. So by designating it a conservation area, all of that land in there, the you're saying no, it's not going to change any behavior right now? 
anybody's if anything i would think it'd be protecting the behavior i mean if you think of the national park services those are all conservation areas but those are some of the most widely visited across the country by millions of people every year um and it's done completely you know in support of the community that's that's the idea of the guam forest system is to create something exactly like that but for the people of guam right i know the idea i yeah but i'm uh, all of those are managed very um, you know, they're managed, they're, uh, they have to be that are very, very, uh, what's allowed, what's not allowed in these places. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not free use. And I know that the people in these villages are very used right now to the government land being, you know, treated as like free use. They, they go in there, they do, yeah, lots of activity. All right. Can you just, um, I know you talked about forest fires, uh, can you talk about other threats that you're trying to resolve by, by designating all of this property conservation area or, or in part of the forest legacy area? Oh, and, and so you talked about uh, preventing fires and restoring native species, right? Are there rivers uh, involved in here? Are there water? Yeah. Yes, yeah. right? Yeah. So right now it's hard to, to talk about additional threats because we can't even get to that stage. You know, the additional threats come in when we talk about, like when you talk, well, these sites are hit by wildfire every year and in some places like repeatedly. And so there isn't even a chance for forests to, to grow. And so what happens when you do have forests, right? You get other threats, you get like invasive species, incursions, um, uh, maybe disease, things that we manage regularly amongst even our urban trees and our managed sites. So what we're trying to do is just get to the point when we can talk about other things other than fire. So putting trees on the ground will reduce the, the fuel, the types of fuel, and convert that to forest stand, retain water at the top of these watersheds, reducing flood potential within the villages. So yeah, the Manel River would benefit the best here, but nothing will fix that right angle turn right in front of the Barcinas house. So that's always going to be a problem there. But if we can hold water capacity, uh, retain water on the, the uplands, we can potentially reduce the stress felt within the streams that, that um, threaten the villages. Right? So I, I hate to say it like that, but it's once we handle the fire, we will probably then see other issues encroach a forest, um, like ungulate damage perhaps, <laughs> but we're not even there yet. We don't even have habitat that's worth wildlife sticking around. So that's, you know, you're going to see more, more and more complaints about wild pigs within the villages. And you're going to hear that every year because their habitat, preferred habitat, is missing. Additionally, there's also the threat to our fisheries um, through each of the waterways and the erosion that comes because there's no forest in those areas. Um, and we're losing hundreds of acres of coral to, um, what do you call it, to soil erosion, let alone climate change and the bleaching. Um, and then that also impedes on our, the ability of our people to have adequate or sufficient fish life because of the coral depletion. Yes, I understand that, yeah, the whole we wanna, you know, preserve the landscape we want to do from, uh, you know, ridge to reef, uh, all of it. But I'm just trying to, for this particular property, I want to give them details what exactly, yeah, they're going to, to you know, see here. Um, the, so, yeah, it looks like when the Department of Parks and Rec uh, reserved, or the land was reserved for them, it says um, they're, uh, they just had general categories such as natural preserves, conservation reserves, territorial parks or community parks, territorial recreation facilities or community recreation facilities and historical and prehistorical objects and sites. And I, I think you also noted that there are historical sites in there. I think I've been into some of these areas and there definitely are. And but that will now be managed by Department of Agriculture. I think I would more so say that it would be protected. I mean, we wouldn't try to change anything that's in there, but plant trees around the area to protect what's there so that the soil stays together with it. Um, one of the 
archaeological write-ups for the Maneo Gea, is it the Maneo Gea's area, Christine, where we were, was that planting trees um, in those areas actually pre preserves the, and protects the artifacts, which were often um, washed away by erosion and rain or damaged by the fires. So we wouldn't try to change anything with the cultural sites. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so he talks about the specific lots. Without a map, it's very hard, yeah, to talk about these. Um, what about, uh, can you just explain why you picked uh, these properties as opposed to any other properties, for example, up north? Limestone. We actually tried to pick um, up north as well, but the large areas that were in government inventory, and I think this is another testament to the fact that just because it's in government inventory doesn't mean it gets protected um, if there's no one administering it, is that one of the larger swaths we were trying to work with up north um, after doing extensive research, I think it was Senator Perez's staff at the time, found that um, the lot had been somehow deeded to private families or it bordered on, and then it became, it's under um, like legal battle over who owns what, and it had been divided and subdivided. So there were areas that we couldn't even work with. Um, it actually was increasingly difficult to identify suitable sites up north. Um, these were the low hanging fruit. All right. Um, okay, uh, Senator Pears, questions or comments from any of the senators? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Director uh, Brecht, for uh, mentioning that. Yeah, there is a bill that it, I did introduce, and um, yeah, it had to do with clear title. So we were looking for yeah properties that didn't have any uh, claims by private owners, um, and that was uh, one of the reasons why we picked these properties. Um, and I think also too, in regards to this, these particular bills. Um, you know, these are huge watersheds. Uh, I believe the one in Babulao, um, that was, there was a study done um, many decades ago and they were, they were looking into uh, developing it as a water source. So um, I think it's, it's critical that these areas, uh, these watersheds are, are protected um, considering the amount of water. And if there is uh, fires there, um, that, that, you know, it's a, it's a, it would have cascading effects in regards to erosion. And so, yeah, these are water rich areas as far as um, Bill 291 um, is a water rich area and it's inland. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, this particular property was, was uh, selected in addition to not having claims by private property owners. Um, and um, so, yeah, I was uh, trying, uh, during the uh, discussion, I was out trying to read through uh, the MOA with uh, the, what is it, the refuge? Program. And so this is one of the concerns that I raised with the director beforehand. I wanted assurance that it was not a mitigation project. Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I'm looking at this. Um, so in my understanding, uh, so these projects are, um, are going to complement the Integrated Nat Natural Resource Management Plan or the INRIMPS. And from my understanding that many of these have not been um, followed through uh, by the different commanders, and so uh, previously, um, and so this is a this is a, an interesting change. Um, uh, Director um, Chelsea, what was the other? So you said this. There were two areas that were selected. So Guam is one. What was the other property, of, uh, other jurisdiction you mentioned? Sorry, you're you're muted. You're muted. Yeah. Sorry, I have a two-year-old around here, so I, he randomly yells things. I need to mute myself. Um, it was Hawaii, and it was for the restoration of bird habitat. Okay. Do and that was the first of its kind. Um, and I think it was less than, I want to say less than five years ago. So um, this is the second sort of um, use of the repi funds like this, and the first time it's ever been just for conservation outside of the fence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you can give, give us more information. Uh, I don't know if we have that right now. Which, which part? I'm sorry, I don't. Um, I'm sorry, which, 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 which information did you want? And I can look for that for you. Yeah, which part of Hawaii? Um, so yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, I, I might be able to find that in my emails, but I'll write it down just in case. Yeah, so it's interesting. There's a, there is a parallel between this um, agreement and uh, perhaps in Hawaii. 
because um, one of the things, the, the, the problems that they're trying to solve is um, recovery habitat for the Guam Micronesian kingfisher. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, there's some things uh, that I need to consider too, as far as like there was this Guam mitigation framework um, that uh, was uh, created uh, to, to in preparation for the biological opinion. Um, and so I, I also, in my conversations with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is that um, none of the mitigation projects were taking place off base. Um, yeah, so it's, um, but again, in, in reading the, the memorandum of agreement, it talks about how uh, both parties, uh, Gov Guam and uh, Department of Defense, um, basically need to, um, to further the uh, protection of native ecosystems for the recovery of listed species. And um, generally, I think conservation plans take place. Sorry, Senator, you, I, keep, I don't know if it's me, but you keep going in and out. I can't hear everything you're saying. Sorry, I don't know, maybe I was covering my speaker. Yeah, um, I don't know if you, what far, uh, how far back do I have to go, but yeah, I'm just trying to make the analysis uh, that uh, the, the, the issue is shared where there's a need to protect native ecosystems uh, in order to, to recover territorially and federally at-risk species. Um, but yeah, according to this document, um, this REPI program is only a non-DOD lands, but it complements the which takes place on DOD installations. Um, that's just something I'd like to comment. And um, so, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I read that too. So I understand what they're trying to reference as an example right now up um, up north in Anderson as part of their NRAMP. They're doing um, habitat restoration by removing feral ungulates. They're putting up fencing to replant. I think it's also in that area where we saw the Cerianthus. Um, that that's sort of around that area. That's their kind of NRAMP mitigation work, which basically has nothing to do with us. Um, so this isn't mitigation for any of that. I think what they were just trying to reference is like, you know, their version of, hey, we're trying to do something good behind the fence too. And this is the same kind of work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for both, uh, to you both for being here. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Taitikui. Uh, Masi, Madam uh, Chair, uh, I was just looking at the uh, uh, MOA as well. It's quite extensive and it's ironic uh, that uh, Senator Paris was reading the section I was reading at <laughs> right at that moment on the top page of the, one of them. It's quite a bit of information to, you know, um, to look at and I, I will take the time. Uh, I think this uh, bill um, is important to give us um, that much, to spend some time to look at um, what agriculture is actually doing and what the plans have been in the past. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit confused on like who owns what and who, who gets to decide what goes on the properties and stuff. So one of my questions was um, that the property that is identified in Bill 29, uh, 292 and 291 currently are under the jurisdiction of the government Guam agencies such as, is it under Chamorro Land Trust uh, right now? Oh, it's not. It's it's under what, Charles? Sorry. Government of Guam. Yes, Government of Guam. Um, not under Chamorro Land Trust. We were also that because as much as that is under Government of Guam, it's still not necessarily low hanging fruit as we'd have to go through the commission before we could get use or agreement for the properties. So I know for a fact that it doesn't belong to Chamorro Land Trust. Okay. Um, Okay, then you then it is under government of Guam, so it's kind of like a, a tug of war on, on some of these properties. Um, has there ever been an opportunity to put an MOU together between the agencies and all these stakeholders? You mentioned that an MOA is not needed by the governor's signature, but an MOU um, between all agencies, uh, all the stakeholders, uh, you know, that may want or have like public uh, parks and rec. Department of Land Management, maybe even Chamorro Land Trust, but all these agencies to come into an MOU in order to gain, without going through legislation, in order to oversee this particular property. Can, has that ever been done? 
with the MOU? Um, with the MOA that we have right now, that also has Parks and Recs um, as one of the signatories. Um, I believe one of the challenges we were discussing with regard to an MOU, an interagency MOU, is that those are not permanent. Um, I, I believe they have sunset dates. Usually, like they can exist for a specific period of time, but it also becomes vulnerable to whoever's in leadership at the time. Um, and so then that might negate any permanency of the work that's being done. If you get either an administration or a director that decides that they wanted to change that or revoke that, then there goes all the work that was the goal of, I guess, the project. So you, you wouldn't be able to do an MAU for 10 years or something like that is what you're saying? Um, not for the funding requirements are usually 20 years or more. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to do an MOU for 20 years. It's, I, it's almost like I, MOU that's, I believe when we talked about it, that was something that was raised, a concern that was raised, but I don't want to say that that's exactly what it is um, because I'm not 100% sure. I just, I believe that that was part of the conversation is that there's a lack of permanence when there's an MOU or an MOA. Okay. Um, Chels, the Department of Agriculture, um, if, if this bill does go through, uh, would you be anticipating leasing any portions of the property identified in, in both of these bills? Would you have the authority to do so once you have it under your department? I don't believe so. I believe that would have to go through at least some form of checks and balances. And that was never one of the issues or that never came up as a point that we wanted to lease property to anyone for anything. Our, our only intent is to try and conserve and preserve the properties and improve them for the community. That's the only intent we have um, so that hunters have viable habitat for hunting, our wildlife that we would like to protect and keep have habitat for themselves, that our watersheds are protected, our reefs, that's really the only intent we have with any of this and is to seek funding to accomplish that for the community. So is it safe to say that these properties are under a conservation, are considered conservation properties, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, currently right now, who monitors these, these um, areas? No one does, except for when our forestry guys go in there to fight the fires and put them out. Okay, so if you were to, um, if this bill does get passed and all this property, which is, I'm not mistaken, 5,509,664 square meters just on Bill 291. How much, by the way, Chelsea, how many is that in acreage? <laughs> We've asked the same question and haven't done the math. I don't know the exact acreage. I'm sorry. That's like I think we were going million. back and forth over what we thought an acre was. Because on Guam, I think an acre is different from what it is in the States. It's not the exact, it's not the same square footage. Yeah, square meters, uh, it says. So I'm, I'm curious to find, okay, so you don't know how many acres that is. Okay. Well, um, now I lost my train of thought because I was, I was looking at I'm that sorry. section right now. No, 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 it's just, um, so if you were to obtain all these pro the, this property, um, what funding are you gonna need or um, to fulfill your obligation um, and monitor these properties. That actually opens us up to funding opportunities. Um, we'd be able to engage in um, larger amounts for the land scale restoration funding under forestry. Um, it makes it viable for use of the $2 million we've already secured in REPI funding and potential additional funding. Um, it opens us up to compete competitively for um, what is it, wetlands grant funding under US Fish and Wildlife. So it, it actually opens us up for more opportunity to seek federal funding for restoration any and conservation. Um, would you be seeking any funding on the, uh, from the general fund? No. Okay. And in the event you're unable to um, get, I mean, because it's quite a bit of property, you know, mm -hmm. and if, if you're only able to get a certain amount, like only 2 million, wouldn't you want to start slowly instead of trying to get all the property all at once? Or, you know, it's very difficult to, I'd like very much, uh, Madam Chair, to get a map 
you know, um, and I'm the map. Not send, a, sorry, I'm trying oh, to send you guys you. the map right now. Um, both maps. Okay. The map that was but, attached to it was very light, hard, hard to read. So if you could, yeah. I, I think what I have is a little bit easier. I'll, 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 I'll try. And if we could, currently you already have um, a forestry, a forestry system in place right now, right? In Cross Island Road, you were talking about. There's some areas there that have already been on the plan. Is that correct? Um, they're not in this plan. Um, yes, there's. Uh, I'm not exactly sorry. I'm sorry, Chels. Can we also get another map indicating all those areas uh, that where the uh, forestry system plan was implemented? Um, can it we hasn't also get been implemented anywhere else. Uh, these would be the Any first lands in that inventory. So I, there's the Forest Legacy Act and then the Guam Forest System. I like to say that we're trying to create the national park system for Guam or the state park system. And so these would be the first two properties in that inventory. What about the one in Cross Island Road? There was an, a major area, um, acreage of, pro of land that was um, planting of those kind of pine, pine needles and uh, type of trees. The acacias. Yeah. Conservation area. I, are those under DPR's inventory or are those in AG's inventory? DPR. So DPR owns that, that area there? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. We manage. We manage, and I mean, the forestry work that you see there goes back, what, 30, 40 years. So that's reforestation work at an opportunity. But look, the turbine went up. We lost all of that that vegetation, all of the that reforestation effort. Um, so this is this is, is what we talk about, like losing. And that's under. That's the challenge is that if it's under another agency, we put in the work, but it's still, it, there's no guarantee that it's protected. Yeah, that's, that's what, you know, MOUs or, yeah, wish agencies will work more together. Today, we've learned that a lot of agencies are not working together, you know, um, and that's an we issue. We do. I mean, we work well with DPR. I think it's more so that they may not have been aware at the time, depending on who leadership is and it changes. They sometimes forget that there was this MOA or that MOU, which makes it, I think that sort of strengthens the the reasoning behind wanting to be able to administer a lot under a specific agency, namely us, because then at least that never, pe uh, the people who work for the agency don't lose sight of the fact that that's the property that's in AG's inventory. That's the property that we're working to protect. I think earlier, um, my last uh, comment, just a comment, and I, and I hope to get the map too as well. If, if you can't send it over this, this chat, that it could be emailed to the Senator so we can look at it. Um, but uh, my last comment would be, um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking of the maps. Oh, the plan. It was mentioned earlier in the conversation that a solid plan of what you want, what you're planning to do, what it's intended to do, but really having a step-by-step, um, -step, you know, plan to see it instead of just, you know, here's all the property, you know, go for it. It's, it's nice to see what your, your plans are. So if we can get that plan to um, and look at that, uh, maybe we get, we more amenable to um, you know helping your your mission to go forward because I know once you like you said Christine earlier um, talking about trying to get you know that growth up but we can't because you know the fires are burning and it brings down you can't create forestry you know when it keeps doing it and um, that makes sense but you know I think uh, if we can see that structure. Uh, that can build to where you were talking about and getting to that point, um, it would be a lot easier to, um, to support. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, if Senator, I may, uh, oh, go ahead, Christine. I was actually just going to reference our forest action plan. So, you know, Department of Agriculture Forestry has a forest action plan and it's, it's in the middle of being updated right now. <laughs> like finalizing the, the update. And, but the current, the current plan I no longer have the cover to it. Um, it, it, it. It actually lists as far as priority watersheds. Um, and so these properties fall right into the priority watersheds, which we have estimated delivery set of, you know, sediment delivery loads. We have um, all of the impacts to include wildland, urban. So it's like, it just prioritizes which ones we would want to address first. 
um, given the, the funding opportunity and access. Access is big, you know, for these parcels. And so once we get it, we can create our access and then prioritize if the work is going to be closer to headwaters, closer to a lower stream, or if we're going to grow off of existing green spaces on the property. So there's already a, um, you know, a methodology and approach that we would take based on what we can access and as we work, how it will grow from there. So, so the, forest, the, the forest action plan for Guam is sort of the roadmap on how we justify our funding but now that if we, if we get the administrative rights to the, to the property, we can fight for this funding and really put this plan into action. You mentioned it was being updated. Um, and yeah, and it so it's not online yet. Um, it's not online or anything that we can review? The existing the one is online. Um, the, there's an existing forest action plan. It just requires updating every five years. Um, and okay. so that's where the team is. That's what we're doing right now. This and, one's and on, this, a, it's on a 10 year update for this, this, oh, this version. Five years, you get, a, you get to revisit it in ad. Okay. And so the 10 year update um, just sort of makes sure that our issues, our goals, everything's still in line. But do you have something separate if you were to get the property and, and then this action plan would come into play uh, kind of thing, like, you know, that we can look in, without going through it probably I know it's thick as far as uh, documents. It's probably that thick, you know, um, something that just simplifies it, you know, uh, and, and your steps and goals and your timelines in order to achieve your, your, the ultimate goal. We would create a stewardship plan for it. So the, any, any goal, any project that we start to address, we draft a stewardship plan based on what we have available, right? So sometimes the first tackle is getting that access to the property. And then once we have it, we go from there, how we're going to plant, what we're going to plant based on the threats to the site or um, what's existing. So we would develop a, um, a plan and it doesn't have to be very, you know, very big. It can be, it can be pretty brief right. to start. Right. Well, um, and I hope we can get that before, you know, beforehand um, so that if, we can see um, what the plan is. And, and then if, and part of, um, Part of that would be detailed in the rules and regulations, which would describe the use and the intent of um, the use for the property, which it would be aligned with the Forest Legacy Act. So there's establishing um, areas for education, um, areas for recreation. I mean, we, I love the idea of getting to create some sort of botanical garden, like natural um, or native trees and plants botanical garden for our community. We don't really have anywhere to to look to, to, to see something like that. Um, but with the conservation work, it's pretty, there's a template that, I mean, I learned it in having to write the proposal for the wetlands grant proposal uh, or write the wetlands grant application, which is you have to go in and assess the area, then they clear the area for, for um, invasive species, whether that be removal or just bush cutting. And then you plant the natives in that area and then you have to go in and maintain that area so that till the natives get tall enough and strong enough to survive on their own and then they'll overshadow the invasive species um and some yeah. of that is the template work that would fit anywhere in any of those properties and some of this is pretty extensive so coming up with a with a plan um for these properties that we haven't been managing you know we we respond for fire and then we leave so mm -hmm. to, to, to develop a, a plan that would be the best science in management implemented, we would probably have to pay for, for additional contractual work to help gather all that data. And yeah. so that would be, you know, it's, you don't want to develop a plan for a site you've never even been able to do an ecological survey on. So we'd, we'd need to get that science down so that we're efficiently using our funding. And then it would be well, hard to get that done if we didn't have administrative control yeah. over the property because then we could do all of that work, invest all of that money and then lose access to it or have a different agency decide to do something else with it. Yeah. It's just like, um, I, thank you for that. And I, I see what you're, you're saying, but it's, it's just like anything. If you go to a bank to get a loan, you know, and, and they wanna see a business loan, they, they wanna see your business plan you know, before giving you that loan. And, um, and, and it doesn't have to be the whole, you know, business, uh, everything from, you know, 
counting every penny or anything like that, but it, it's, it's some kind of um, plan in front of the, the, the bank, you know, and that's what I'm thinking is put something together. It doesn't have to be that thick or anything like that, but a business plan, you know, um, cause this is a, a, a lot of property, you know, and uh, maybe it could even be even in phases, but um, I, I greatly appreciate all you're doing there at, at Department of Agriculture. <laughs> movement you're making is commendable, you know, toward um, the forestry and, and, and everything you're doing. It seems uh, agriculture has been uh, popular this week and last week. So um, I thank you, Madam uh, Chair, for the opportunity and look forward to, um, I think there's a map that might have been put on the uh, chat, but looking forward to both maps, one where the, the potential property is or the second map on where already, if there's any kind of forestry up in, you know, um, like the one in, one in uh, Cross Island Road, even though it's under DPR, um, still it'd be nice to know where these, these areas are. Cause I know during the um, Calvo administration, thousands and thousands of trees were planted in certain areas. Um, and some in, in Umatic area, I think down near Sutter Bay, um, there were quite a bit. So I, I'm curious to see what, what those are doing uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Torres. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chelsea and Christine, it was very interesting uh, and informative listening to you this afternoon and you've certainly covered a lot of ground. I was just wondering in the, you've, you've referenced many plans, a forest system plan, the forest action plan, the forest property legacy act. In, in all of these, you know, there's, there's an element of conservation and preservation. Um, but I was wondering, though, in, in, in any of these plans, is there also um, an effort to have a certain quota of green space maintained on the island? Uh, in other words, tracts of property that will, will be under, undeveloped and used um, specifically for the uh, preservation of, of native species, uh, you know, plant species and animal species. Is that part of a general plan um, as in other jurisdictions where there's a, a certain quota for undeveloped land um, always so that we don't overdevelop and have environmental um, issues as a result? That is the absolute intent of the Forest Legacy Act. So there's the Forest Legacy Act, which was adopted into law in 2012. Um, and that requires the establishment of the Guam Forest System. And the Forestry Action Plan is the, basically the manual for our forestry division that we follow every year um, based on what we've identified as priorities uh, for the government of Guam. And we do this in conjunction with partners and stakeholders with everyone from Guam Waterworks to UOG um, to nonprofit organizations. Everyone has a say in the Guam Forest Action Plan. So in the Forest Legacy Act, it identifies wanting to preserve these areas for that specific reason, for community use, recreational use, education and research um, and limiting development. And that is, there, is, is what we're- prescribed is there a prescribed quota though? Is there, is there like a, an end goal uh, to say, for example, you know, 10% of Guam will remain green, 20% of Guam. And, and that's what I'm alluding to because I know in other, in, in, I know of one jurisdiction, it's a foreign uh, country where it's written into their constitution where there's a specific cutoff point. Uh, and I'm wondering if, if that is also uh, part of the in, in, incentive uh, for making sure that agriculture has jurisdiction over um, forestry lands. You, uh, um, you, you, I believe the only, and please, Christine or anyone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the only thing we have to that effect is the Micronesia challenge and Guam's agreement to pursue that. I believe that's the only place that something like that is written. And so it's not in any of our statutes. But I, because I, mean, that, I, I could be wrong, but that's what I understand. Okay, because I because I think that if if we had if 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 in fact the plan was to preserve to a certain degree, right? And and of course the preservation also has to do with the preservation of the the coral reef by uh, containing runoff, 
um, containing sediment into the, the bays. Um, all, all of that is, is, has been a continuing effort, but, but you know, t- at, at some point, urbanization will result in all those um, ill effects, right? So there has to be, there generally is a cap on urbanization in, in addition to certain strategic spots, right? There's always a, a cap to how much rural era, area, under, undeveloped area has to be in with a uh, paved area or roadway system. So now I was just wondering if you had a quota because maybe that is also, um, that, that also has to be considered when we push for legislation like this because then it compels the issue, right? It, it compels us to, to meet that quota um, so that your objectives are uh, accomplished. And, that, and that's why I brought it up. I was just thinking um, of other models that, that I know. I, may, I wish we had something like that. I, I would hope, I haven't seen that yet and it's not in any of agriculture's, um, what do you call it, establishing I can't remember the word right now, but the rules and laws are mandates. It's not anywhere there that I've seen. And I've read everything that falls under our department. Um, but as a perhaps resident it, of Guam who loves our island, I wish we had something like that. Perhaps it's a land use plan, you know, the, the master plan. Perhaps that's it and, and agriculture will have a role. But uh, I but think I that that's they didn't very finish that. Yeah. So but the, yeah, director, director, you were you were right on it when it came to the Micronesia challenge. It was without without having said quotas. There, you know, there is a uh, the Micronesia challenge addressed that. And the thing with our Micronesia challenge, Guam Micronesia challenge, is that I believe the marine resources were always the hardest to meet the the required percentage. And and it was because you know. We all, we all, I don't want to recap it, but we, we all know with the marine preserves and the conversations that came out of that. Um, but so what we have been doing to chat, to try to meet the, the goals of the MC has been to increase terrestrial management. And that yes. is through reforestation work. That has been how, so expanding into these spaces are, is only going to help us continue to try and reach the goal which will cover the, the MC, both terrestrial and marine, because by better terrestrial practices, we're protecting those marine resources. So that's the closest um, at this point, I think. I think it's nice to have a target, right? If we had a target, if we had a target written in statute, um, I, it, it, only, it only makes the process uh, more fortified, I think, so. But yeah, but thank you very much. I, I, you certainly are very, um, very interesting. And uh, I learned a lot this afternoon listening to you two ladies. So thank you, Christine and Chelsea. Thank you, Senator. I have, I have no further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, I have some more, but Senator Richel, would you like to interject now? Any questions or comments? Uh, I just want to ask a couple more questions myself. No, just um, whenever, whenever you uh, let me close. Okay, thanks. So, um, all right, just, yeah. So like Senator Torres said, there are different uh, plans, I guess, that are being made by the Department of Agriculture, including the forest action plan, the system plan, that forest action plan, the, the most recent one I could find was one from 2010. Is there one more recent than that? Or is that it? There should have been a 2015 version online, which didn't, it, it's, basically makes the same document. I think they changed a couple names here and there, um, but the update's gonna include our Manel watershed work, the landscape scale restoration projects. The As far as the, the tables and the maps that you will find, it's going to look about the same. I mean, the threats are still happening in the same places. Um, and so it'll, it'll be very, very similar, just adding more partners and different project approaches and you'll see a change in, you know, there's, there's more of course in the biosecurity section of it all. Yeah. Okay, because when I first reviewed this bill, I was concerned because we're moving this land uh, as part of the Forest Legacy Act, which also requires a plan, right? And, um, but we don't have the details of that plan yet. And then, uh, you know, we read in the news about the MOA, you know, with the DOD and, that I think requires another plan. It's kind of, um, it might coincide with your forest legacy plan, but it's really a separate detailed plan. And so 
I was reading the MOU now and it says <clears throat> the parties uh, will agree on due diligence surveys or baseline studies necessary to determine priority habitats and specific locations to serve as focal sites for the comprehensive forest enhancement. Initially up to 600 acres within established Gulf Guam reservation areas. Now, like you said, this was signed in December, 2019. So what was the 600 acres that you had in mind at that time? Because this, is, this document is signed by Admiral Manoni, and then the Director of Department of Ag, the Chief Forestry of uh, the Chief of the Forestry Division of the Department of Ag, and and then Richard Ibanez, who was the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. So, if you could just explain, yeah, what were you representatives from Guam um, thinking for the 600 acres here when you signed this in December? Um, I believe, so the reason that DPR was part of the signatory agency was because it would complement the work we're already doing on Cross Island. Um, and the best that we could do was to target the areas that we were already working on, like the Maneo Gaius watershed, um, because that's where we already have approval um, to do work. And the plan that it's discussing in there isn't like a new comprehensive um, thing. It would take into account Guam's forestry or forest action plan um, that would allow us to identify the types of efforts and work that we would put into it. Um, so although they use the words and describe it as a plan, it's something that would just align with what the work that we're already doing right now. Um, but they would give us basically the funding and the ability to engage in it on a larger scale. Right. But so you had determined the 600 acres already, right? When you signed um, this? Yes, but we were also hoping that we would have these uh, lots to work on as part of those 600. Um, that was the intent when we started. That's why we started doing the heavy research and figuring out what, what GovGon properties we could do um, or use for this. And we initially wanted to start, like I said, up north, but ran into so many barriers with the properties up there. So these were the easier targets to work with. Um, and then that's when we brought it to... Um, our oversight chair, Senator Rogel and Senator Perez, um, to discuss these properties that we could use that money on in for conservation and restoration. All right, and they so define the forest action plan priority sites sites that that if we address them, we can reduce sediment loads. And um, yeah, so it wasn't just arbitrarily; it was there right. was already identified um, watersheds. Okay. Um, and then it says that the parties will meet to develop the five-year strategy, uh, and it you know, gives a schedule for meeting. And then I, I thought I read somewhere here, oh yes, that the target completion date of this strategy is October, 2020. So is the strategy done? Because I would like to see that also. Um, I'm sorry, no, we haven't met with the, um, the non, the NGO that they've identified as the funder. So we have the general strategy in place, like the rules and regs for the forest system plan of what we wanted to do, but it's nothing that has been finalized until we meet with the NGO group that's um, administering the funds, because then they can start relegating funding for specific actions. And they're going to be the ones reviewing your rules and regulations for the forest? No, no, legacy? no. That, okay. That's who we'll be discussing um, the plan with and the strategy. Okay, because this says the parties, which is Admiral Minoni, you, and the director of Parks and Rec. We're going I'm to sorry, do I have it. Five year strategy, a which, size, which is what I think all the senators are looking for here. And the identify okay. focal sites, uh, management targets, res natural resource management targets, metrics that will be used, monitoring public engagement considerations, permitting, and other environmental compliance requirements. Um, so yeah, I think those are, yeah, the type of information we hope to see. Um, yeah, you know, I support your work and I think you guys are doing good work. It's just these agreements between one agency and then the Department of Defense always, uh, you know, kind of, uh, highlight for me, they look like the, those programmatic agreements where we have one person in the entire government of Guam who's authorized to sign off on these without really any, um, you know, discussion. For example, I, I am 
I'm afraid that we've committed 600 or, you know, in order to get this money, we're going to have to commit 600 acres, which you said you, you can't tell us whether these bills equal 600 acres or how many acres this, this, this meets, or is it more or less that we are, um, you know, talking about in these bills? Are, are you able, you're not able to tell me an acreage? Director, no? Oh, so, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Whether that could complies, yeah, with the, this 600 that, that seems to be promised in this MOA. And then, you know, if you look at the, it, it refers to enclosures that the, you know, should be consistent with the enclosures. And one of the enclosures includes a map. And uh, it seems to be highlighting uh, the areas that were planned out for the 600 acres back in December. So if, yeah, my staff could just load that map. Let's see if it's clear enough to look at right now. Real quickly. Okay. Are you? There you go. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, I'm gathering that these yellow highlighted portions are are the portions that have kind of been promised to be part of this uh, this uh, strategy. These these uh, amount to 600 acres, maybe. Uh, I you know I'll look closer at the documents, but but yeah. So I see the border of Naval Mag there, and so it goes from Naval Mag all the way to Marito, and then I see the Yamatic area. I see the Pocket area, and uh, there's even an area over there next to looks like Upper Harbor. Is that the wetlands? Yeah. All right, but um, I guess yeah. You know we have a okay. We can take the map down now. Thank you. So, yeah, I want to support your efforts. And of course, you know, if we can get $2 million without, you know, uh, without uh, restricting use of this land for what the government of Guam wants to do with it, it, uh, you know, that's great. When I look at the Guam Legacy Act, the statute, the local statute, it's very clear that uh, if land is transferred into the inventory, that it's governed by the Department of Agriculture by itself, and that um, the, the department can lease it. And you know, we talked about that earlier, and you said there's no leasing, but it's very clear there in the statute that it can be leased, uh, and that uh, there are, you know, certain purposes. Mm -hmm. And, um, I read it somewhere else here and uh, trying to see where, when they talk about the specifics of, you know, how we're going to manage the at-risk species, of course they talk about uh, putting up barriers. And this is what they described to us up North, you know, when uh, a lot of it was uh, fencing to keep out the ungulates, right? And that was their forest mitigation is keeping out the ungulates. And so that's just a, concern for me because I know that these people in Maritza and in Arahan, they are, you know, used to traversing across this land for, for their purposes. And I, yeah, if we're going to be putting up fences, I want to see exactly where those fences are going to go and, and, and what, you know, so if we could see this is going to be fenced, this will be, you know, for a reforestation area or, you know, this, we're going to fence off this river or we're going to fence off these historic properties because I, you know, it's very clear from this agreement now that I'm able to read it that uh, we're very clearly talking about historic properties and control of those historic properties. And um, so by us doing this bill, moving it into department, jurisdiction of Department of Agriculture, yeah, I, I want to talk to also, you know, Park, Parks and Rec, uh, the SHPO, and see, you know, which historic properties are we talking about here? Because I know, anyways, I just want to clarify that and see so that's why I want to see your plan, because if any of our plan, you know, includes putting up fences, I think we should all know about that in advance. And I just want to tell you when I, where I'm coming from, so you don't think, you know, it's anything about you or your, your, your work. I think your work is good, you know, preserving the coral, of course, the runoff, all of it. I want to help. My issue is just that, you know, we've seen... Um, projects, for example, um, dredging of coral in Upper Harbor, where uh, that was done. And then the mitigation was done over there uh, in Pneumatic uh, on top of Seti Bay to 
plant. And so we, you know, you, the part that, you know, the Department of Agriculture, all of the volunteers that you've ever seen, you know, students go out and help in these reforestation projects are all part of this area that was set, a, set aside mitigation to take care of those corals in Umatic, far away from Upper Harbor where, where the actual dredging took place. And so, you know, when we looked at the um, EIS for the, uh, you know, the the removal of the thousands of acres of forests in the north, I, I definitely saw in there that, uh, you know, we are going to be looking for other places to, to mitigate, which, you know, if that's what we're left with, that's what we're left with. But I just want everybody on Guam to be very clear. I don't want to be fooled, you know, that uh, this is uh, something that we are going to do simply because we have, a, you know, we want to plant more forests. I think, we have to be very clear, the property that's being designated for these areas was agreed to by the Admiral, not by the governor or, or the legislature, it was the Admiral and the Department of Agriculture that chose these properties. And uh, they're, you know, so, you know, I just want some time to take a look at this because I, you know, I just, I just want to be sure what all is included in these properties. If you have specifics, I very much urge you to show us the specifics, the strategies that you're going to be using in these areas so that the people of these villages will know exactly what's going to be done. I'm very concerned about the historic properties in these areas. And while I agree, you taking care of these areas might preserve these historic properties. I just wanna to come to an agreement on that. I want Parks and Rec actively involved. I want Hishipo actively involved to say, yes, if we do this, this, helps, you know, and doesn't hinder. We have a big issue with access to historic properties on the base, we've been denied. And, you know, we don't want that to happen on our own property, this government of Guam property. And so, you know, I, it's a government of Guam property. And I just feel like uh, nobody should be, you know, agreeing to give it away or, or restrict it or do anything with it without a consensus of the entire, uh, people of Guam, that's really all. And so otherwise the use of what you plan for it, I, you know, I probably have no objection to it. You guys are doing a great job at, you know, uh, reforestation and I totally get why we're reforesting, you know, these uh, rich to, re you know, to protect the reefs. And, and I, I want to help, like I said, so just, I just want to get, you know, get rid of it, all of the other factors that, uh, that, uh, yeah, seem to be tied together here. Uh, for example, the property and the designation. And I want to get Parks and Rec's input because uh, land management shows that some of these properties, again, were reserved for, for their use and, uh, and that they have historic properties. In them. So uh, any other senators? Yes, uh, Director. I'm sorry, Senator. I was looking for the area where you were reading about enclosures. So I just wanted to um, clarify that when we're talking about the installation of effective barriers, those are the fire breaks, not um, fencing. Um, that's why it's in light, or it's also with um, the installation of erosion control treatments. So it's the fire breaks and then the tree plantings in those areas. And then because this is federal funding, you would have to go through the SHPO anyway to do an archeological assessment of the area. Um, and I'd, I'd, I'm hoping that what we can provide you as a strategy would be what we're doing currently in the Maneo Gaius area, because that's exactly what we would be doing here is that exact strategy. And it doesn't restrict any access um, for the community at all, really. Um, what, okay, can, can you give sorry. us an example what the two million will be used for? What would you use it for? For example, what did you use in the, the, the Gaius Valley or the sure. Gaius? conservation so, area, what do you spend money on? Is it, yeah, if it's it not- It would be on used to conduct uh, the, um, what is the number 501, 502, but basically the SHPO, it would be used to conduct the archeological survey um, and then be used to contract local companies to bush cut the area. Our team would come in and plant trees. And then ideally we'd contract those same people to consistently maintain the areas by cutting the grass, cutting fire bricks to protect. That would be the enclosure to protect the trees. Um, and then just monitoring them to ensure that they grow and that they can outgrow the wild, uh, the invasive species. That's the monitoring component. So that's basically what we would be doing in all of these areas. 
And then what we, our goal or our dream of what we'd like to look for funding for additionally would be to build in um, park, uh, what do you call them, hiking trails and camping grounds for people. It really is just to turn this into like the Guam forest or like the Guam state park system. I love that. The the issue is that the plans are not laid out, right? And that was all the whole legacy access. You know, you're going to lay out the plans first. You're going to lay out the rules and regs. And then, you know, the property will be, uh, it's it's actually envisioned that the property was already in your inventory. And now, and, you know, so for us to transfer it there, yeah, I think it's fair for us to see the plans, especially if you have plans with some other entity. Yeah, I'd like to see those in detail. And what you described, of course, I think we're all going to love. So just, uh, yeah, if you have those details already and you know what you're going to do and you've, uh, you know, made that type of arrangement. Yeah, let's just see that. Sorry, senators. Uh, yeah, any other questions or comments? Okay, all right. Um, okay, and uh, you know, I I don't know, Senator Rigel, if you have a, a good way to explain to the people the properties that are being described. Maybe the map that I put up is a good one they can tell. But if there's one where you can uh, anything that you can do to assist, I think I think would be helpful to to tell them. Yeah, like you did where those properties are. Okay, um, so these two bills are uh, from that area in between Inarahan and Marizo going inland to Naval Magazine. And then the property in the other bill for Yamatic is, uh, could you just describe that again, Senator Rigel, where would where we sure. find uh, that? So it's sort of in the, it's called the Bolanos or Bolanos area. It's sort of, um, where you can't, most people would know it as like the Mount Lam Lam area and that ridge line. So the southern ridge line there in the Mount Lam Lam uh, area, on the, the inside of that ridge line, with the inland part, that's the Bolognas area. Uh, so really, it's an area that's primarily used right now, hikers and really hunters. Hikers actually mostly hike along the ridge line. Hunters will go down inside into the interior because they're looking for game. And um, I know this because I've been on a hunting trip in that area before. And so um, uh, that area is primarily used by hunters, hikers, you could say, if some hikers of course wanna venture off the ridge line and go further inland. Um, in that whole area, as, uh, as uh, Chelsea was mentioning, you can actually see um, Fina Lake from there. You can mm-hmm. see it from that area um, because as you see on the map, it kind of goes towards the border of the naval mag. Um, in fact, my Niao told me, if you want, you can walk straight from there all the way into the naval mag. But of course, that would be illegal and you'd be trespassing. But, <laughs> and it would be a very far walk. But you can actually see it. You can walk in there. So it's right up against the naval mag. This is really interior land. It's not really being used for any other purposes. It's just a mixture of some jungle and mostly grasslands and hills and valleys. And that's that pneumatic area. Um, So um, it's a really nice area. So I think it would be great actually to um, preserve it. And my understanding with the Department of Agriculture and the meetings I've had with them is that's the only intent here really is just to preserve and put a conservation area in place. Um, I understand there's concerns uh, that you have uh, Madam Chair with um, as far as you know whether or not this is uh, somehow dictated as part of like the dealings with the federal government, with the military for mitigation purposes. Um, I was assured it has nothing to do with the mitigation. Also, I uh, can point out that the Forest uh, Legacy Act, if that's the correct name of it, but the law that was passed, several, I think it was in the 90s, if I'm not mistaken, but passed quite a while ago. These lots in uh, the Umatic area and the Manel Gaius area were also lots identified in that Forest Legacy Act. So the Forest Legacy Act actually had a bunch of different um, areas that they came out with um, uh, as far as plans for uh, areas that they wanted to designate as potential Forest Legacy areas. If it did, I might be mistaken, if it wasn't actually part of that act, uh, plans came out subsequent to that act showing what areas they wanted to identify as potential areas to be a part of the Forest Legacy conservation areas. 
these areas were identified on that. So these areas were identified way before any mitigation efforts for what's going on up in uh, uh, you know, the military buildup. So these areas were identified. There was something like, as my staff looked through all of the lots, there was actually something like, I don't remember the exact number, maybe like 17 different, there was a lot. And we actually narrowed the list down as uh, Chelsea was mentioning to the ones that didn't have any issues with title. Some areas there's cloudy title, there, there's arguments over who owns it, who's got control of it. So we really narrowed it down. One, some of the areas even included, I remember Cocos Island was one of the areas identified on this mm -hmm. um, forest legacy plan. Um, and there was like 17 or something around that number of lots. I don't remember the exact number, but it was a lot. And we narrowed it down to just about three. And it's the three main areas. It's the Umatic area, the, the Milanus area we're talking about, the Manel Gaius area, and then another area up north that's in um, uh, Senator uh, Sabina Perez's bill. Perhaps Senator Sabina, you could explain that area, but that's a separate bill. So really between our offices and the Department of Agriculture and going to land management and seeing who has title to all these lands, these were the areas that we narrowed it down to based off of this map and a uh, I wish we, we, we can, we have the map somewhere, we could probably provide it to you. There was a map that showed what had previously been identified as potential forest protected areas under that Forest Legacy Act, pursuant to the Forest Legacy Act. Um, so we have a copy of that map. That map, like I said, is all across the island. There was lots of lots of lots identified. But when it came down to it, when we looked at all these different lots, these were the ones we were left with. They were really the easiest ones to identify because there was no problems with the title as far as arguments over who had control of the land. It was clear who had control of it, it was the government of Guam, and it was clear that uh, this would be something that would be easier to transfer under the administrative authority of uh, the Department of Agriculture. And so also in my discussions with the Department of Agriculture, uh, they've assured me that this is something they still wanna allow people to go into these properties, to go hunt. I, that's another question, I said, can they still hunt in these properties? They said, absolutely, that's their plan. Uh, forest protected area, allow for hunting, just regular, you know, proper hunting where you get your license, you sign up, you regulate, you got your tags and you say, I'm gonna go hunt in this area, it's government land. And in fact, I agree with um, um, what Christine was mentioning earlier that this would actually attract more game uh, into these areas because the game go looking for food to eat. And uh, if you've got more trees in there, you've got food for them to eat. You got more plants, you got food to eat. The grasslands are not enough for them to eat. Um, and these areas right now are really getting, um, turning into badlands like Christine was mentioning. There's a lot of areas that are uh, just eroding away. There's more and more grass. Uh, it burns more and more uh, every year. And so the idea here was to protect the area, particularly to protect it from future developments. Similar to what Senator Torres was speaking about earlier and how certain countries, I think she mentioned uh, that there were, she knows of a foreign country I believe if I'm not mistaken, she might be referring to the country of Bhutan or Bhutan. At least that's one country I know of that has done that where they set aside a specific portion of property and they say these will be forest protected areas and you cannot develop it. So while this is not necessarily setting aside a percentage of acreage on Guam that we say we can't develop anything beyond these acreage acreages, it is identifying specific areas that we're saying no development on these areas. Uh, so you know, that's, that was the whole intent and the thinking behind this bill. And uh, the, we did put a lot of thought into it. We looked at all the other properties. The other properties just weren't suitable or had too many other issues with who owned it, who had title to it, who, what other agencies had plans for the property. Some, some properties, it's in the GovBombs inventory, but over the years, another agency has come up with a plan that they want to do something with it. So these were the properties that we found that the other agencies said no, at least agencies we spoke to that we believe had the uh, uh, authority over it <clears throat> said that they didn't really have any plans for these properties. And right now, nothing's being done with these properties. They're just being sort of left out, uh, like I said, used by hikers, hunters for recreation purposes. Pugwa pickers, sometimes people down south go into the jungles just to look for pugwa and pick. And so my understanding is that it would still be available for all of those uses. People still want to go into, in fact, if we forest protect an area, we could have more puga trees in that area. And then there would actually be a place 
where uh, local uh, Pugwa gatherers could go in there and pick Pugwa. Um, hunters can go in there and hunt during the right times of year and with the right licensing, et cetera. Hikers can go in there and hike still. That's the intent behind this bill. Um, so I do uh, appreciate the concerns that uh, the chair has raised and uh, we can work to allay those concerns and identify any more information we need to provide to the committee to help uh, allay any concerns uh, of the chair or of any of the members of the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I, I might suggest, uh, I will ask uh, my staff to maybe what might make it easier too is to get a Google Earth picture of the areas I think would be easier so people can kind of visualize and see what areas we're talking about. That's the only other thing I had to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's a good idea. Thank you very much and appreciate that. And uh, uh, so uh, we did receive the testimony from the Department of Land Management that's been shared with all the senators and we will look at that closer again. I see in the agreement, the MOA, that it outlines specific properties, including Anau, Kotal, Balanos, and then it says those conservation reserves through public law 16-62 and 31-173, which includes the Legacy Act. Uh, so we will take a look at those. And uh, I know that from land management's testimony, they show that some of this was reserved for parks and rec uh, to include some conservation areas, right? So they might be um, consistent purposes, right? Okay, so again, thank you all uh, senators for your presence here and your questions. And uh, thank you to the Department of Agriculture for your questions. Looking forward to the details. Uh, the more details you can provide, the better. And the strategies, just so we can answer all those questions. Thank you again. All right, thank so you. this uh, hearing, we're gonna call these bills duly heard. It is now 5.51 p.m. Thank you. Be safe.